What's going on guys? It's your boy Sam Paddy Projects back at you again with another video. So today we're going to be working on the Audi TT. We're going to be doing the oil pickup pipe. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. One is for preventive maintenance. Two, to inspect to see if we have any uh, metal shards in the sump and that will give us an indication of um, how well the engine's been looked after. And the third thing is when you do these preventative maintenance things, you need to do them before you're gonna get the car tuned. So this car might be getting tuned in the not too distant future. So we wanna make sure we've covered all the bases. We've done the cam follower and while we're here, we might as well give it a service while the sump is off. But without further ado, let's jump straight in. Let's get it done. So let's get the car in the air, get the axle stands under the front control arms and start to loosen up this under tray. So there's T25s at the front, four T30s as you move your way down and I think it's a T40 or T45, big one right at the rear of the under tray. And the under tray is ready to come down. So let's look at what we're gonna need. So, got some sealant for when we take the sump, sump off and we clean it and we put it back on. We've got a new, brand new oil pickup pipe with a new rubber as well. So this is the part that we're looking to change today. Obviously we're gonna be draining the oil, so we wanna put some fresh oil in it, fresh filter, nice little service. And we've got some brake cleaner, so when we take out the sump, we can sh 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 get it nice and clean. You can use petrol for this if you want, but I've got brake cleaner, so that'll do. Let's take a look at what we're gonna need to do. So, we've got the oil sensor there. All that is still a bit warm from where, where I've driven it. Um, up the sides, we have, I believe they're 10 or 12 mils. I've, no, I think they're 10 mils. And also they've got a hexagonal um, Allen key sort of um, socket in there to actually be able to remove it as well. So we've got them all around the sides. And I know where the gearbox is, which is here, there is a couple of tricky ones in these holes. But let's continue and we'll get to those soon. So let's get this oil drained so we can carry on with what we need to do. Pop the plug back in after it's fully drained. Let's loosen the bracket that's holding the oil pressure sensor on. Careful not to break the tab when we're taking it off. Sweet, it's enough. So now let's work on the oil return pipe. And there's a little bit of spillage. Probably should have expected that. So now let's start loosening the 10 mil bolts that are holding the sump onto the rest of the engine. All right, so here's where things get tricky. Let me see if I can get your angle on it. So there's two bolts up here in this hole. If I can get the light correct. The, that bolt there that is going to be really hard to get to so that's the one we're just trying to get now so I did intend on using a bit of blue tack in with the wobble socket but turns out I don't have any blue tack now you don't want to drop this bolt into the gearbox because then you are in for a world of pain send it and aren't they the famous last words? So I ended up dropping both of the bolts um, into the gearbox, but luckily for me, they caught on the lip of the gearbox, and when I took off the sump, I was able to fish them out. You won't always get that lucky, but I certainly did. Thank God for that. So I'm taking out the transmission bolts. There's three of them, all different sizes, so you can't mix them up. So at this point, I thought it was free of all of the bolts that are holding it on, but there were a couple of T25s I've seen here that were holding it on the bracket. I believe it's on the cooling pipe, and that was one of them. And the second one was on the other side, and that's another T25. So now the sump was ready to come down. With a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of persuasion, it came down carefully. Okay. 
Okay, cool. So we've got the sump out. You can just see some darker areas there, but that's just to be expected. So let me just dip my finger in there, see if I can feel any metal. That's good so far. No metal, just a little bit of that sludge. That's fine. Nope. This is what I was looking for. It's like no metal shards, nothing untoward. The pickup pipe looks pretty clean, but let's get this cleaned up properly. Let's get it brand new. Would have liked to have cleaned it up a little bit more, but we're running against darkness and it's raining. We don't want water in here, so we're just gonna give it one last blast bit of parts cleaner and let's get it dried up so then i went on to clean the main surface where the sump meets the engine with a small little craft knife so now i need to take off the old oil pickup pipe finally and once again i probably should have expected a little bit of oil to spill but hey you live and you learn so i've got it here and yeah there's definitely a few little bits stuck in there so it's a good job we're replacing it so here is our new oil pickup pipe with the new rubber so let's get it on one thing to mention about these oil pickup pipes is there's a specific um, bit that you need to get to um, put these on i use the t25 but i got very lucky to not strip the threads So at this point, I fluffed my lines majorly. I was putting sealant around the inside and not the outside and way too much of it. So I ended up spending an hour taking off the sealant and redoing a much thinner bead around the outside. But a how not to do video is sometimes as good as a how to video. So with a much thinner bead on the outside of the sump, it was ready to go back on. So now it's time for the 10 mil bolts to go in hand tight. So when I was ready and they were all in, I could tighten them down in a crisscross pattern to make sure the sump seats correctly. So with that now done, it was time to do the 16 mil gearbox bolts. Reconnect the sensor. Reconnect the sensor bracket plate. Reconnect the return pipe. Tighten up the sump plug. And now we're ready to put some oil in it. And we're also gonna remove the ignition fuse from the fuse box in the engine bay of the car. And it's the 20 amp fuse as seen. Right, so it's late in the day, so we've taken the fuse out of um, the fuse box for the ignition coils. So now that we've got everything back in and we've drained it out like that, we just want to crank it a few times without any spark, just to let the oil circulate. So we're going to crank it, we're going to um, let the oil circulate, then we're going to put the fuse back in, we're going to run the engine and fingers crossed for no leaks, let's go. We're we looking good so far. All right, so job done. No leaks underneath, but I'm going to leave the on the tray off um, just so I can check it in the morning and over the next couple of days to make sure there's no leaks. There's no lights on the dashboard, no oil pressure lights, no low oil lights, so that's all good. So you might have noticed I didn't change the oil filter and uh, that's because I didn't have the biggest socket that I needed. I had one smaller than it, I thought I had it. But it was serviced not too long ago and the good thing about it is you lose more oil when you um, take the filter off and I only had four litres and it takes four and a half litres. So 
and I had a four litre bottle so that was al almost perfect for me so I'm not scared it's still going to go in for this um, regular service so that's not a problem but if you've liked what you've seen like share and subscribe it's your boy Sam Paddy Projects and I'm going to catch you on the next one